Like these days you looked at with intrigue, where back then you were looked at with suspicion. I, well, I don't know. We, we've, we've had some artists that we probably shouldn't have had in the shop, but like he, he gave him a chance and it didn't work out. If he was a doctor, his bedside manner would be amazing. He'd convince you you've got the rest of your life when you've got about a minute left to live. So have you seen the Lad Bible ones? Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like, you know, when they interview like drug runners and like weird <laughs> people. We mix business and play. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Reese Gordon. I run a business called Little Tokyo Temple of Art, which is a tattoo studio. We're located in downtown Surrey Hills. I remember from about 12 years of age thinking clearly I don't want a normal life. Tattooing came along. For me, as a young kid, it was amazing. They were just such cool pictures of dragons and skulls, and I sort of went down that road, and, and it's given me uh, definitely uh, an exciting life. I was 15 when I got my first tattoo. I probably looked about 11. I remember lining up out the front of it, had a big airbrushed front window, a hot rod out the front, you know, rock and roll music playing, like, man, this is cool. And I remember the guy going to me, how old are you, mate? I go, oh, 18. And he just looked at me and went, don't tell your mum where you got it done. So it was just exciting. Back then it was, pretty rough and tumble. Like the guy that taught me to tattoo was a convicted armed robber. Um, he'd been in and out of jail throughout his life, but he was a great guy. He was, you know, he, he sort of took me in as a young kid. I was 15 or 16 when I first started. And I'd spend every night after school, weekends, school holidays in the tattoo studio. So this is sort of a snapshot of the industry of what it was. Not everybody was like that, but that was my introduction. Um, I've gone the opposite to try and make it as welcoming as I can. It's got a very spiritual Eastern vibe to it. We play nice music, very welcoming staff, open and airy. Yeah, just the total opposite of a small tattoo shop, which I loved and I was a part of for a long period of time. But for progression, like tattooing is an intimate exchange with someone. People can be doing it just to look cool. It could be for bereavement. It could be to mark a certain moment in their life. So there's so many different factors. But when that person looks in the mirror, whether it's a small piece on their arm or a full back piece, they all get that same feeling of like, this is something I did for myself and purely for me. All too often when I ask people why they're going into business, they give me the same short-sighted answer, to make money. But in my experience, you need to have a reason to go into business, something bigger, a why that's bigger than just making money. And I can tell already, Reese has got a passion and he has a good fix on the reason why his business exists. He's in an industry that has had a colorful history, but he's found a way to creatively turn into what looks like to me anyway, a solid business. And for me, that's what it's all about. Reese is so positive, man. He's just got the calmest nature, the easy going nature. He's just gives. He never takes. Reese is like probably the best boss you can ask for. He's like really taken me under his wing like since day one. The best way to describe him is Zen Master. He is so easygoing, so fun, so generous. Everything good in a human is Reese. <laughs> My name is Emma Salmon. Reese is my partner, coming up to nine years. I met him when I went for a consultation to do my sleeve. <laughs> so he was my tattooist. <laughs> with Little Tokyo, I have just dipped in and out here and there, helped him with his systems. And then I just worked on reception for about a year and did shop managing and things like that for him. Yeah, I met, I met him. Um film in Bondi Inc. I didn't have a shop at the time and he's like, come here. The thing about Reese is like, he'll, he'll try everything. If it's art, if it's painting, if it's drawing, he, he just like gives everything 100%. I don't think it's like a waste of time or anything. I think that's what makes him him. My name's Ian Noington. I've uh, been friends with Reese for nearly 20 years. When I first started getting tattooed by Reese, Reese was working out of a bedsit in Bondi Road, right? And it was a tiny little, tiny little room. 
he went to America and he came back and he went, oh, I've seen this warehouse in LA and these guys are slinging art and they're doing this and it's more of a, a collective and he said, I don't want to do it here. And he ended up moving into a shop in Bondi Junction and the shop was really cool, but the energy never changed. That what Hal Reese made that a bedsit feel, he made the next shop feel. And then he opened up where he is now in Surrey Hills and that's just gone and that's become a version of what he saw in LA. Whether your business is starting a little bed set in Bondi like Reese did, or you're moving into a bigger space, you've got to make sure that you nail that very first impression. For Reese, it's his warmth and attitude. It's the little things as well. And if you want to make a great first impression in your business, you've got to get those things, those one percenters down. It's about the way you answer the phone, your tone of voice on socials, and even things like whether your email domain name matches your business name. To help nail your digital first impression, no one's got the backs of Aussie entrepreneurs like GoDaddy. So I think there's a huge market for Reese to advertise, not only as a tattoo shop, but eventually as an art space. Reese's mindset is already there. I think the issue is a limited understanding of technology, how modern things work. Like he's, he, he'll admit it himself, he's a dinosaur. He's limited in his knowledge because of who is surrounding him. So he wants the big players to go, dude, this is how you do this. Like you, you, you're you, being held back by, I think it's just by lack of knowledge or lack of understanding. Right, what's gonna stop him? Not acumen, but his ability in business. Like I'm good at what I do. I'm really crap at business. I'm an operator, not an administrator. I don't understand ATO and shit. I understand keeping people alive, protecting people, creating a safe space. So it's the same thing for him. You know, what's stopping his growth? Business acumen. If Reese wants to take Little Tokyo to the next stage, he needs to make sure that he, as the business owner, is ready to start thinking differently. That often begins by imagining your business as something wholly separate from you. In other words, step back, have a look at what you're doing. Will Reese be open to learning and applying new skills? And most importantly, Will he be 100% honest with himself? Let's find out. So, your business is called Little Tokyo. What's the business? Tell me what the business is. Describe it. The business is what I would say a high-end tattoo studio. That describes what you do. Yep. But that's not the business you're in. What business are you in? Customer service. What business are you in, Ash, again? Ah, oh, okay. Our business is making people feel good about themselves. Why do they feel good? Because they come in, they've maybe got some body issues or somebody's passed away or they want to empower themselves so they get a tattoo that means something to them. We've got in the bathroom a big mirror and it says a peacock moment. So they look at themselves in the mirror and whether it's a small tattoo or a large one they all get the same feeling. Tattoos are pretty useless at the end of the day. They're to make you feel good about yourself. If you can attach an emotional or a spiritual reference to it all the power to you. In my mind, it doesn't make it better or worse. If you're trying now to increase your business or elevate your business, you mean you want to get more customers, you want to be better known, or do you want to uh, make more money? Which one of those three, or all three? All three, but the main driving one is to take the business where tattooing has not been before. So I want to now do whatever I can and make it as big as I can, make it a household name but I want to know how to get into the younger mindset, you know, what young people are doing, and I don't know how to do that. Tattooing is, is mainstream now, and obviously as generations move on, our preconceived ideas on things change compared to our parents and the generations before. Like these days you looked at with intrigue, where back then you were looked at with suspicion. We're also getting people in the industry now introverted people like what my generation would call nerds you've got people specializing in anime tattoos now and you know cosplay style stuff from an old dog in the industry now who's seen the progression i want to keep progressing and and keep learning by these younger people okay one of the missing pieces is right in front of reese it's his young team if reese wants to tap into the minds of his younger audience in other words attract younger customers Holding a hackathon with his team who are similar in age to the people he wants to talk to is an absolutely no-brainer for me. Are you trying to hit a target or are you just throwing the ball hoping to hit a target? 
That's the thing where I need help. I don't think there is an individual target in this industry because it's so diverse. Like, how do I appeal to someone? That There's likes- not 3,000 targets. There's a target of, you know, 1,000 people who are maybe the age group from 20 to 30. Yeah. Have you sent and had a hackathon, hacked in to what the various cohorts are, what the audiences are? Have you actually done that? To an extent, we've got it broken down what each artist specializes in. No, but have you held a, a hackathon no. where everybody gets in a room for a day or two days and you... No. I've been doing and recommending hackathons in my business for quite some time, many, many years. It's one of the best ways to strategize, innovate, and create solutions and do it collaboratively. No matter the size of your business, you can set half a day to a day where you allow a group of people, in my case it's everyone, in your business to come up with new ideas that could benefit your business in the long run. Then off the back of that, you can start to work out some messages. But what do you think your messages are? Well, from Give me an example. Well, a message for them is they pretty much rely on me to do it. And right now, sorry. To do all this stuff? Yeah. That's crazy. So you can't send out a message to your market if you don't know what the purpose of the business is. And if you're a proprietor, It's not always your purpose. It's the purpose that your customer wants from you. What does your customer want from you? You may even choose to ask three or four customers to come and join each one of the groups that you set up so that they can give a customer's point of view to your vendor's point of view. And in the two, you merge the answer. And from the answer, you come up with your purpose. And from that agreed purpose amongst your whole group, everybody's seen it, understands it, you then come up with a message and you hand that message to your marketing team. That's what a hackathon does. Then work out, once you know what the messages are, which platforms you show them on, which digital platforms or any other platform for that matter. Which messages work best? You know, whether is it visual, is it video, is it in a story? See, at the end of the day, you want to be a household name, you've got to know what households want to know about you. Mm-hmm. And you've got to feed them what they need to know. Yep. Business owners need honest and regular feedback. That's called the feedback loop so that they know what their blind spots are. Blind spots are unrecognized weaknesses. We all have them, but it's not the weaknesses that we know about that are likely to derail us from our goals. It's the weaknesses that we don't know about that are the dangerous ones. And you've got to be open to that. Does Reese know what his blind spots are? Does he know about the consequences if they aren't addressed and how he will respond to critical feedback is really important. Can he respond to critical feedback? Can he handle it, especially if it's really constructive? Well, let's start with you. How would you describe yourself? No, no, better still. What would someone else describe you as? I'd like to hope a good boss, but maybe too much more on the friend side than a boss side of things. But I think at the same time, I'm respected because I'm still working hard and, you know, all the stuff that goes with it. Okay, let's just have a look what someone said. Yep. Yeah, I, I guess Reese is so um, he's so nice and agreeable that like he'll give anyone a chance, but it might not work out, you know. He's so caring and wants the best for everyone that it's slightly detrimental. However, I also don't want him to get rid of that because it's what makes him him. It, what, You're nice. It's what makes yeah, him yeah, so yeah, humble. Yeah. It's what makes him a good businessman. It's what gives him respect in the industry. He can speak his way into and out of any situation. However, oh, sometimes yeah. <laughs> I think he gives people too much. I think the, the phrase would benefit of the doubt. You know, like he lets them, he lets them go on and on and on when maybe he should have pulled them up and should have said no cut it now or something. So I think he just needs to toughen up a bit, a little bit, but that's probably because I'm a bit tougher than him. He will say it to them and he'll say it really eloquently, but then there'll be no follow up. So there's a, a bit like any kind of, you know, punishment or whatever, or whatever you, you would call yeah, no it, whether it's training a dog or, you know, how you are with a child, there needs to be a consequence. He will say to people, say, I need you to put this thing here every Friday, for whatever it is, and five out of the ten people won't put that thing there every Friday. But then there's no consequence for them not doing that. So I think he just needs to toughen up. So, who was that? That's my missus. Right. And she's in the business with you? 
not not as a partner, but she's helped with me and helps. But she's there. She's, she's got observed. a vested interest. For she sure. observes you. Yeah, she observes you. So, is what she's saying is it accurate? I'd say pretty accurate. Yeah. Yeah. So accurate. she's saying you need to toughen up. It seems to me. I mean, you would describe yourself best. You're an artist. Yeah. 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 I mean, the place is full of artists. Yeah. 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 It's difficult. Yeah. Well, um, there's a big difference between being an artist and being in the business of artists. Yeah. Pretty. You're in the business. You want to be in the business of artistry or be an artist? Which one do you want to be? Both. No, you can't be both. Which one do you want to be? My, I have to be both. Well, I want a tattooing to but me. But you might not be able to. You well, might not have the talent to do it. it. That's true. But, but and it maybe it just means you have to find someone who can come in and run the operations yeah. in a business sense and for sure administration. Yeah. And I'm not talking about someone who's a hard ass who's coming yeah. in and slapping people around. Yeah. I mean just someone who's on your tail and everyone else's tail, the other 19 yep. artists. They're all artists, yep. I guess, I think. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, artists don't run good businesses, generally speaking. They're good at art. That's why they're called yep. artists. Yep. Um, if you want to be good at the being in the business of being artists, maybe one of the things you do is remove yourself. Yep. Just every now and then, be playful around being an artist. In other words, you might have two or three clients or five clients. This yep. could be you. But the rest of the time... Yep. You're running the business, and running the business is about structure, yep. and about discipline, and about process, and about re repeating it over and yep. over and over again. So I said to you earlier, hold a hackathon. For me, I do my businesses once a month. You know, you can do the best stuff you've ever seen. Your, your um, um, website is very good. But in the follow through, if someone doesn't, in my case, doesn't pick up a lead, yep. then I, someone's gonna say, what a shit company. For sure. They, they didn't care about me, not interested. So you need to have structure. So yeah. to have structure, that's a whole suite of skills and talents. Yeah, I don't have. You either can, you can learn how to do it. Yep. You either want to do that thing yep. as the business owner. Yeah. And you learn about it. There's lots yep. of ways to learn it. There's lots of tutorials, lots of things yep. you can do to learn about it. Or you hand it over to somebody else. Yeah, I'd rather do that. Yeah, you, it sounds like it to me. Yeah, I, I want to tattoo. If I had to give up, I'd rather, tattoo is my drive. Yeah. I'm not going to give up tattooing. Yeah to become the runner of the business. So do you, do you, I mean, is your business doing well enough to find an administration? We're not talking about a CEO, I'm not talking no, about- No, no, no. I'm just, not even talking about an operations manager, but I'm talking someone who can manage. Yes. See, a, a good administration person or a good person to run operations or a good person to sort of do this stuff, manage the business, is someone who's not emotionally involved. Yep. You know, you can't be a parent and a friend yep. to your kid. In business, the same. You can't be one of the, yeah. the colleagues there on the floor yeah. doing the tattoos and doing the creative and the artwork, but then come back and start saying, no, but I'm also the boss. Yeah. You can be the owner, yeah. no problem. But it's good to have someone in there who's sort of like, not bossy, but organized. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, organizational skills, administration. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, it's definitely lacking. And I, you're talking about leads, like we, we get leads that's not really an issue but then the transforming of the lead into the client that's is a massive breakdown because it just gets forwarded off to an artist they might not reply for three days then the shop gets an email again hey i sent you an email two days ago and you're going to deal with it yeah and, and that's your reputation if you want to be a household yeah. name yeah i guess you want to be a household name name for being known as doing great work yeah not letting your customer down yeah prompt yeah available and efficient and yep. well priced. Whatever you do, even before you find someone to look after this part of your business, get on my playbook, look yep. at chapter two. It's called Playing Defensively. Yep. It's about setting up structures within your business and systemizing yep. everything, even if you just handwrite it. Yep. I don't care. Reduce everything to a manual, into yep. a manual, like an actual manual. And then meet every month with your two or three people yep. and review everything every chapter of the book. And then, it's not very long, it's, 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 yeah. it won't take you long to read it. And then, go right back to the very beginning, hold a hackathon for everybody, yeah. and find out who your audience is, into the various categories, run it as a cool thing, a fun thing, yeah. and then work out what messages are best sent to that audience. Cool. Where do I find an administrator? Well, maybe if you've got a 55,000 audience, Maybe you could just get on there and do an Instagram story. Just say, listen, I'm Reese. Like, we got a really cool dudes yeah. here. Put everyone behind you. We're looking for someone to come in and be a really good administrator. These are the qualities we're looking for. Yeah. If you're interested, DM me. Yeah. 
and you just need one who understands digital. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. Talk Appreciate soon. it. Thank you. You know, it was very confronting. I got hit by things from a lot of different angles. I felt insecure. I felt like, do I try and defend myself? And then it started to make a lot of sense. I think I'm, I'm close, but still no cigar. There's a long way to go. But a lot of things like started clicking in my brain. So yeah, I, I look forward to what the future holds. I love that Reese wants Little Togo to be a household name. I really do. I think they have a bright future ahead of them. By involving his young team, getting the right message, and putting it out there into the market once you understand the purpose from a hackathon and hiring an overseer of this business, someone who can actually do the man management, run the business, I believe that Reese will be on his way towards his dream for Little Tokyo to be a household name. No matter how long you may have been in business, if you can't step away from it and let others steer the course, recognize that you're also a business owner, not just a business technician, then you're gonna be in trouble. You've got to learn what you are best at, play to your strengths, train to your weaknesses. And a business owner has to think about an entirely different set of skills and issues and ideas if they want the business to do well. By all means, you can still be the operator and or the creator when it makes sense, but building a business that operates consistently, profitably and self-sufficiently is the real goal of a business owner. It's hard work, but it's bloody rewarding work it's the kind of work that will test you and show you what you're really capable of. It's work that can make it possible for you over time to replace yourself with the right people and make your business thrive. And that's what it's all about.